Hello, this is Mark Gavor. This use of solver to give the answers to linear programs applies both to operations management and to quantitative methods. We're going to start very simply with a two-variable, two-constraint model. So we're trying to maximize 10x plus 8y equals z subject to the constraints that you see over here. 2x plus 3y is less than 120. 5x plus 4y is less than 200. So the first thing I want to do is set up my objective function. And this is really relative <coughs> excuse me, to where I type it on the screen. And I will make these bigger. I like to have it nice and neat. I will have an x variable. I will have a y variable. I will have a z variable. And then I will leave a space and put my coefficients. What are my coefficients for the objective function? 10x plus 8y, so the coefficients are 10, and 8. And that will be what we use to calculate z. Let's write justify everything. Let's put a header and shade that in, bold it, and let's grid the whole thing in. So this is where my objective function will be. My x values will be here, my y values will be here, and my z value will go there. For the z value to go there, I have to let it know what z is going to be. And according to the objective function, you see it's 10x plus 8y. So I say equals f6 times f5 plus g6 times g5. And you see I get 0. And so this is, where, this is where my x's and y's and z's are going to vary and change. I'm going to highlight that in yellow. That way, this is where the output of the model will go. To check that I've done it right, let's put 1 in for x. 1 in for y, and I should get 18. I did, so I assume that I've calculated it properly. Now, uh, next thing I want to do is put the constraints in. There are my constraints. We'll go right underneath this heading. I'll make this bold. I'll make it bigger as well. And what do I want to do? I still want to have x. I want to have y. I want to have left hand side. I want to have inequality. And I want to have right hand side. So I'll do this. I'll write justify all this. I'll probably make my inequalities centered. I will bold this because it's a heading. I will probably grid it and I will add the same color shading I added above. Then I'm gonna, I have two constraints. Remember in Solver we don't do x greater than 0, y greater than 0. There's no need to do that. It's just a click in Solver. So what do I do? I want two constraints. So I only need to grid in a little bit, two rows. And I put my coefficients, two, three. On the right-hand side, I put what's on the right-hand side, 120. The second constraint is five, four. And on the right-hand side is 200. And I can do less than or equal to. I could do less than or equal to that way, or I could do less than, highlight it, and underline it. Either way. Either way is fine. There we go. Now I want to put a yellow shading here 
because this is my left-hand side of my equation. It is what 2x plus 3y will be, and I want it to be less than or equal to 120, and this is where 5x plus 4y will be, and I want it to be less than 200. It does not know, so I have to put an equal sign and do the same thing I did above. I want to get 2 times x plus 3 times y. And again, I get 0. Here I want to put equals to 5 times x plus 4 times y. And notice I get zeros again because it's all 1. So let's put 1s in here again just to check to see if we did it. Well, I get 18 still. That didn't change. 2 plus 3 is 5. 5 plus 4 is 9. I think we've done it. So let me zero that out. Now I'm ready to go into solver because I have my basic problem set up. I have my yellow spaces where all the answers are going to go. Solver is under data. I click on solver. And the first question it asks, set the objective. So I highlight the objective. Right now it says it's an F5 because that's where the cursor was when I opened this up. But I really want to put it there where I have the calculated Z. So it's H5. I want to maximize it. Yes, I want to maximize it. Which variables do I want to change to do this? Well, I want to change x and y. Now I have to add constraints. Constraints will be added here. I'll do add and then I'll add them both at the same time and then check to see that they're, they're done properly. But I want to add the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Since I've already calculated the formula for the left-hand side, I don't have to worry about the coefficients here. So let's click on add. And my first constraint, I will add 0, which is the H11 for the first constraint, less than or equal to, less than or equal to. And I will add my constraint, the right-hand side, as J11. So I'll say add. Now it gives me the opportunity to add another one. Left-hand side, I put this, the less than or equal to, less than or equal to. I'm fine there. I hit the right hand side and now I hit OK. If I hit add, it'll want to add another constraint. So I say OK. So I've got my two constraints, H11, J11, H11, J11, H12, J12. Perfect. Make unconstrained variables non-negative. The unconstrained variables are X and Y. So they're non-negative. I want to use simplex linear program, and I say solve. It gives me my answer. 40 for x, 0 for y gives me 400. And I can see that I've used 80 of this constraint, and I've used 200 of this constraint. So this constraint is binding. This one is not. It has some slack in it. If I want to, I can just leave it as is, or I can add an answer, sensitivity, and limits. Now, if I click on those and say OK, it will keep the solution, but add three more tabs. So answer one, sensitivity report one, and limits report one. So if I go look at these, you will see I have my same answer here. Z, the optimal value, is 400. X is 40. Y is 0. It tells me the first constraint is not binding. There's a slack of 40 because I believe it was 60. Uh, the, the constraint was 100 and we only used 60 of it or something like that. Actually, we can tell right away. It was 120, and we used 80 of it. My fault. 
And the second one is binding because we used all of that constraint. We used 200 and got 200. So my answers come in the yellow. That's the way I set it up. But also I have an answer report here. If I want, I can go and change the variable names and make it a report, cut and paste it into something else. Here's my sensitivity report. We'll go over that in another video. But here is where it tells you the following kinds of things. One, how much I can increase or decrease the coefficient, 10, on the objective function and still get the same answer of 0, 040. Here's how much I can increase or decrease this 8. I can increase it by 0, or I could decrease it by infinity, which basically means, in this case, 0. This one is infinity, so if I want to put infinity there, I could do that, and I could write justify it. So it looks nice in the report. And the same thing here for the constraint. It tells me how much I can move these and still get the same answer. Outside of these ranges, it's going to change. So as you saw here, for y, I can't change that constraint at all. Or I can't change that coefficient at all. And as long as the second constraint is between 100 and 200, it won't change the answer. If I make it 300, then it may change the answer. And then we have a limits report, which I guess is what we're looking at. They both kind of tell us the same thing. But if I go to the answers report, this gives me my binding constraint again. And if it's binding, the only constraint I can improve on is this one. That's a quick overview of how to do a simple linear program, two variables, two unknowns. You could check the same answer using Desmos. Thank you.